iOS devices are advertised to be some of the most secure and private devices on the market. And sure, maybe out of the box they are a decent option, but that doesn't say very much in our modern day world. Out of the box, Apple still tracks you, as well as your cellular provider and ISP, third party applications, advertisers, and more. Your data and privacy matter. We live in the world where everything there is to know about you is just a click away from people you know, companies, governments, and everyone in between. We have a whole lesson covering why privacy is important. Check it out! We also recommend Glenn Greenwald's TED Talk on this. It's fantastic. Today I'm going to show you exactly how to make your iOS experience as private and secure as you need it to be, from beginner to extreme. To make that happen, we have three zones. Zone 1 shouldn't impact day-to-day -day usage, so I recommend you implement everything within it. Zone 2 will require small changes that may impact convenience, and Zone 3 is... Zone three, it's for those looking to go above and beyond. This is mostly a guideline and your specific needs may vary depending on your threat model. If you wanna learn how to threat model and develop a plan in deciding what you want to protect, refer to this great source in the description. No more chatter, it's a big video, so let's get into zone one. Your device's password is your first form of protection on your device, making it not only an important thing to secure, but it's also easy to implement. Use a strong password. If your device is locked out and requires a password by hitting the power button five times, a tip you should remember, having a strong password will be your first line of defense. Like Margaret Thatcher is 110% sexy. Wow. As a side note, make sure notifications as well as Siri are not publicly accessible on your lock screen. Once you set a strong password, you then have the option to utilize biometrics. These typically suffer three major issues. One, they can be cracked fairly easily. Two, they fall under different legal jurisdictions in some countries, meaning you can be forced to unlock your phone if it's utilizing biometrics. In the US specifically, passwords have historically been protected under both the Fourth and Fifth Amendments, but this rarely, if ever, extends to biometrics. And three, while there's zero evidence of this, and I don't personally believe this to be true, some users have privacy concerns behind biometric data on iOS devices. Apple does store this locally and doesn't allow third-party access, with no evidence of wrongdoing, but this is a concern to some people. If you want the convenience of biometrics, feel free to use them. Just remember that power button tip for our emergencies, and I'd recommend disabling biometrics in high-risk areas like airports, protests, borders, and other places with heavy law enforcement where you may be forced to unlock your device. Passwords you use on websites are a commonly left out part of your security. If you use the same password or similar passwords for all your services, one breach can very easily lead to the others being breached since they utilize the same or similar credentials. Weak passwords are in general very easy to crack. Make sure, at least in zone one, that you are using strong, unique passwords. I'll leave a source on what that means and different methods of doing it. Zone two will go further into this. Your browser has the ability to track everywhere you go on the internet. Ensuring you are using something with proven security and privacy is paramount to protecting your web traffic. Anything outside stock Safari is still using Safari and really only adding attack surface, potentially decreasing your security. However, there are reasons to use other browsers, mostly to separate your traffic and add additional features. Having a browser like DuckDuckGo used for non-personal disposable searches, which auto-delete when you're done, away from your normal browser is a benefit. Not to mention DuckDuckGo adds tracking and ad protection. I recommend having at least one disposable browser like DuckDuckGo in your arsenal and more is always an option. Brave has an iOS app with similar benefits to DuckDuckGo and although there's no official Tor app, Onion Browser is the iOS app recommended by the Tor project to help anonymize web traffic significantly. I'll have a guide on our channel talking about mobile browser compartmentalization and how to do it, so subscribe to check that out. But hopefully this at least gets you thinking about separating your searches and web traffic across different browsers that are designed to do different things. Similar to your browser, your search engine also has the capability of tracking everything you do on the internet, which major companies like Google do. iOS doesn't allow you to set that many custom search engines for Safari, but they do offer DuckDuckGo as one of the four default options. Other browsers may have other search engines you can utilize, the two main recommendations being DuckDuckGo and StartPage. Your IP address uniquely identifies you on the internet and can be used by websites to track you. Not can, it is. A simple way to prevent this is by utilizing a trusted VPN provider to not only hide your IP address from sites, but to also gain some additional protection on public Wi-Fi networks to prevent attackers from snooping on your web traffic. As for which VPN to choose, you're in luck because we do systematic, community-driven VPN reviews on our channel. I'll leave our most current top five best VPNs video as a card, 
and in the description. Our current highest rated is ProtonVPN, so I'll leave a link for that below, which even has a free limited plan for you to try out. If you want to know more about VPNs, check out our video where I break down what a VPN is and why you should consider using one, as well as the cons and what it doesn't protect against. DNS is a domain name service, and they are like a phone book for the internet, directing you to the sites you visit every day. The problem is most default DNS providers track your browsing, so try using a DNS provider with privacy in mind. If you're using a VPN service, it likely includes its own DNS server, meaning you don't need to worry about this, although you should double check that. If you aren't using a VPN, check out the DNS servers on privacytools.io and manually set them on your phone. I'll leave instructions below on how to do that inside of your device's settings. This is gonna be broad, but less is almost always more when it comes to security and privacy. Every additional application and setting you utilize increases attack surface and the possibility of abuse with your personal information. If you're a person with pages and pages of apps that you mostly never use, they are likely not just doing harm in the background with your data, but also negatively impacting other things like battery life and storage space. So just get rid of it. Some applications like Twitter have amazing mobile sites. So if you can utilize the web application within Safari and add it to your home screen, that's a great way to separate the app and keep it within your browser, which is typically typically safer than using the application. Outside apps, try to frequently clear data you don't need, like old text messages, phone calls, and especially temporary data like browser cache, history, cookies, and other temp data within your applications. Tying into minimalism, there are lots of settings on your phone and within applications you may never use and are pointlessly collecting data about you as an individual. I made a PDF you can find in the description with some recommendations and things that you can turn off in your settings. Do not forget to go through each individual application and settings as well to ensure nothing is needlessly tracking you outside of the Apple ecosystem. On a similar note, app and OS permissions should not be taken lightly. Calculator apps don't need your contacts and the FBI workout app doesn't need your location. True story. Dig into the privacy settings and revoke any permissions that seem questionable. Keep in mind there are workarounds to abuse permissions that you disable. Check out some of the research being done at Berkeley. They are Android specific, but have confirmed similar attacks are possible on iOS as well. Well. So again, it's better not to have the app at all if possible. Web apps will prevent this kind of abuse like we talked about in the minimalism section. One of the most forgotten things to do is set a password on your SIM card. If it's storing your contacts, someone can just pop out your SIM card and view this information. Even without contacts, if your phone is stolen, someone can send fraudulent messages using your phone number and no one would know it isn't you. You can do this quite easily within your settings, so make sure to just enable it and get it going. Most things you read about, like the newest iOS exploits that dramatically impact your privacy and security, are almost always patched through updates. The best thing to do, as much as we hate them, is utilize automatic updates for iOS, as well as your applications. I personally like reading changes being made. Screw every, every app, app developer, developer who doesn't, doesn't include a changelog. Change and if you're in that boat or you simply prefer the manual route, make sure to at least check for updates frequently. I'd say at least once a week if you can. To finish zone one, jailbreaking. Just don't do it. It only opens things up for exploitation. There is an argument that you could disable things you couldn't otherwise disable before the jailbreak. Um, I am going to recommend to the overwhelming majority, if you don't know what you're doing, just don't jailbreak. Don't worry about it. Your phone is predominantly used for communication, so ensuring you're communicating as securely and safely as possible is quite important. The biggest no is to avoid SMS, aka the green messages, and standard phone calls at all costs. SMS can be unencrypted and they are stored by your cellular provider indefinitely, meaning probably government entities as well. So any random person can likely intercept them. Phone calls are in a similar boat. The great thing about iOS is that it includes iMessage and FaceTime out of the box. They both utilize end-to-end -end encryption and most people with an iPhone or Apple device use them. However, not everyone uses iMessage and while being significantly better than SMS, it's also not quite the best option. I highly recommend as just a simple recommendation, Signal. It's easily the best thing for just a simple cross-platform option that implements some of the strongest security standards and least amount of metadata collection. Check out our Go Incognito lesson on metadata for more info on what this is and why it matters, because it really does matter. Signal also supports audio and video calling, similar to the Apple ecosystem, but for everyone, even your green Android buddies. Outside texting and phone calls, if you're looking to implement encrypted emails, 
Check out ProtonMail and Tutanota. Both have very generous free plans and offer a fantastic user experience. I'll leave links to both of those in the description. FOSS stands for Free and Open Source Software. This means the software's code is publicly viewable and theoretically modifiable by the community. This ensures you can verify the security and privacy behind the software. We have a whole video covering this more thoroughly. In general, I'd advise moving from proprietary to FOSS applications as much as possible. Signal is FOSS, as well as some VPNs like ProtonVPN and iVPN. I'd recommend having that high on your priority list when deciding what applications to download, as well as which services to switch over to. FOSS will typically honor you and your data much better than proprietary solutions because you can verify that they do. To find FOSS alternatives to apps you use, check out alternative2.net for some basic recommendations. Avoiding Apple's iCloud and general cloud storage of your data is a great step as there have been several instances of abuse of user data. You don't need some celebrities to tell you that one. Although for most people, this is quite inconvenient and increases the possibility of data loss because of less frequent backups. For Zone 2, disable as much as possible related to iCloud, like iCloud backups, device syncing, and ideally other cloud providers as well. This will require manual backups, so you'll have to either find ways of backing up your raw data or use iTunes and do a manual encrypted device backup on your computer to ensure you are in full control of your data. Outside using strong and unique passwords, which we covered in Zone 1, where and how your passwords are stored can be incredibly important. Password managers are a commonly recommended way to go. We have covered what password managers to use in a lesson of Go Incognito. In short, avoid storing your passwords within your browser. If you want simple cloud syncing between your devices, check out Bitwarden. If you want a more DIY password manager, there's KeePass with the best clients on iOS being Strongbox and KeePassium. I have a whole guide to KeePass on our channel for those who want to learn how it works. Beyond having a strong password, implementing two-factor authentication is arguably just as important. 2FA combines something you know, a password, with something you have, ideally a code generated locally on your device. At the very least, SMS 2FA, which are those texts you receive with a code, is better than nothing. Although there are a couple issues with SMS 2FA, such as the risk of SIM swapping. The better and more recommended option is a local authenticator app that uses a QR code. Not every site supports this, but many do, so look for it and then use it instead of SMS when available. Some notable iOS apps are Authenticator, Tofu, and Authy. Authenticator and Tofu are both open source, but Authy has a user interface and experience that may be more appealing to some. Radios apply to anything that gives off a signal on your phone. This means predominantly cellular, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, NFC, aka Apple Pay, and GPS. We'll cover the more extreme solutions in Zone 3, but for Zone 2, try disabling Bluetooth and NFC when they aren't being used. Bluetooth for one is an insanely insecure protocol, not to mention Bluetooth being an instrumental tool used to track your movements. It's <laughs> even being implemented in stores like Target, Walmart, and likely more, where beacons are used to track where you walk throughout the store, which is then fed to advertisers who target you with products you viewed in the store. <laughs> it's just totally creepy. As for Wi-Fi, it's good practice to disable it when you are using cellular and vice versa. For GPS, leaving it off when not in use and disabling as many permissions related to it in the settings for both the operating system and specific applications is highly advisable. The general rule of thumb is if it doesn't need to be on, turn it off. Most people are aware of this one, but covering your cameras can prevent the theoretical camera hack where someone spies on you through your camera. This is possible, and a recent vulnerability showed just one way this could be abused. If you never use your cameras and don't want to, just use tape. If you are a standard user who uses cameras on your phone, I'll leave some sliding camera covers in the description that will allow usage of the cameras while blocking them when not in use. The last step for Zone 2 is another physical mod, and it's a privacy screen protector. These make it so it's very difficult to view your phone's screen from side angles, protecting your personal information from snoops and shoulder attacks. The main downsides to these is they can affect the image quality slightly, making it an annoyance for anyone needing to work with color-sensitive tasks or photography. I'll leave a link in the description with some privacy screen protectors. I cannot recommend them more, and the peace of mind they give me in public spaces is fantastic. This is it, everybody. Zone 3, and like I said earlier, this is for the extreme users looking for the utmost security and privacy on their devices. First, disable GPS and location 
altogether. It is easily abused by applications to track everywhere you go throughout the day, as well as the operating system. When disabled entirely, you have to manually enter addresses for navigation and or relying on a separate device. This will obviously mean find my phone will not work. So again, zone three is for extreme usage, which can oftentimes have negative consequences. Keep in mind that just because GPS is turned off doesn't mean apps can't access a general location of where you are, as your IP address can narrow you down pretty well. Again, go to zone one for VPNs, which comboed with disabling GPS will prevent most people from tracking your location. Most people. If you want a guaranteed method of cutting out all radios from your device without just using airplane mode, look into Faraday pouches and backpacks. These are designed to fully eliminate communication your device has with the outside world. They do have to be used properly, and I'd recommend looking at these sources for some tips on doing so. I'll also leave some products to check out in the description that seem to be great options, especially this really nifty backpack. To take iCloud and your Apple ID a step further, you don't even need an Apple ID to use your iOS device. You can fully log out and it will still be a usable phone. You will lose iMessage, FaceTime, the App Store, and more, but just know it is possible to fully log out. If this is too extreme, at the very least ensure you've handed over as little personal information as possible to Apple, disabled all the necessary analytics performed by them in the settings, and disabled as many features as possible like iCloud and more, which we covered back in Zone 2. Similar to SIM cards, your cellular provider is likely something you forget about. In the US, they all more or less track you. Some more than others, but they are all universally bad for privacy. Your best bet is to at the very least sign up with as little information as possible. My personal favorite provider is Mint Mobile, which is a prepaid cell plan, meaning you pay for however long you want upfront, no contracts or payments, and all they require is an email payment method, and an address to send you the SIM card. I was able to use a mail drop, a pseudo email, and a non-reloadable vanilla Visa card paid for in cash to obtain the SIM card I use every day. Mint has no direct information about me and I'd recommend you go this route or a similar one as well. You can find them in the description. The last thing is those pesky cameras and mics. If you really don't want them, consider removing the cameras. Depending on your iPhone model, this may be extremely simple. You can also snip the microphones and stick to only using the microphone on your earbuds. These are for very extreme threat models, but the option is available. Note that opening up your iOS device will surely void its warranty, so don't expect support for your device after doing this. That, my viewer, is the complete guide to iOS privacy and security. I hope you learned something today, and if you implemented even one thing, I'd consider that a success. So congrats in taking ownership of your personal privacy, because again, it does matter and we need to fight for it. So keep up the good work. If you enjoyed this guide, make sure to give it a like below and especially share to help us in reaching and educating more people and subscribe to watch our newer content, including an Android version of this guide coming soon. If you want to support us further, we have a Patreon where you get to directly give back to what we do and enable us to help spread privacy and security to the masses by funding things like the editor who produced this video. Outside of Patreon, we are on Brave Rewards as well, as many support methods you'll find on our site. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I hope you're leaving here a bit more private and secure than when you got here. So peace out, and have a fantastic day.